here we go. As soon as the camera's on, I forget how to walk. You might find a moomin. Exhausting solitude. Oh, this used to be underwater, you know, Kerry. You're going the wrong way! It's a target practice. A lot of Arthurian legend. We'll show it as it is. So this is the iconic Gladstone Rock. Thanks, I want please. a mega good boy treat. Glorious. Go on, Kerry, you're so cute. Why are you taking me up places like that? Path opening in front of us now. <laughs> Hi. This is Kerry. And this is Kat. And we, we are, are tea, tea in Valhalla. Valhalla. And today we are walking the walking path. This route is arguably the most scenic route of the six, the main six, uh, with the, of the main six routes, this is the one where you gain the most elevation. It's extremely scenic. There are waterfalls, a very special route, isn't it, Kerry? It is Great Britain's first ever designated footpath. Yes. So really special you'll see all sorts of wonderful things old mining works beautiful forests lovely open footpaths waterfalls pools it's gorgeous so we parked in a little bit of free parking yeah um, but that fills up very fast but don't panic because there is a large um pain display car park literally opposite and alongside that you can obviously use the sherpa buses that run from clanberry we're also walking through wales's largest hillside farm which is a pretty special thing just encased in stone walls lots of sheep around the area and it's beautiful at the moment because we're actually in mid-november and for some reason autumn has sort of hit a little bit later yeah. than usual so we've got all of the autumn colors really bursting at the moment easy going to begin with nice wide open footpath oh very easy to follow lots of low level walks and things around this area yes. as well yes you don't have to follow this path all the way up you can just enjoy the area lower levels and then go back the way you came or take a circular yeah. you don't have to go all the way up <laughs> But we are, and we're going to take you with us. Look at around us as well. This is what I mean by low level walks. You can get just as much glory from low level walks, you know. Being out in Snowdonia doesn't always have to mean, you know, really high walking, difficult terrain stuff. You can get as much joy doing some low level walks for sure. Absolutely gorgeous. I know, it's perfect, isn't it? Yeah, you can see why it's regarded as one of the most beautiful and scenic walks. This is the tip of the iceberg yeah, at the moment. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree. And look at that. I would more say base of the iceberg. The base of the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> Just so people know, so we haven't come very far really. You can still see the road down there. Yeah. But um, this is where the dipping pools are that you often see people taking yes. photos of themselves in there. So there's a path down there alongside these pools that also leads you up to the old mine work. So if you were wondering where those people are always taking photos of their like having a dip it's just along here this is it. not far at all soon bring you up around the corner and you'll start to see a whisper some of the old mining buildings yeah and possibly some of the old rail workings as well that from the from the mining works yeah yeah the original mining works this track was created by sir edward watkin um very prominent businessman uh, but it was actually opened by gladstone our prime minister 1892 it's a really old path very important path and if you haven't done it it's one well worth a visit oh my goodness yeah if you've got time and you'll see why in a minute so it is considered quite strenuous this walk yes obviously because of it the, the amount of elevation you have to take in i think it's about 13 kilometers in all there and back you need about six and a half seven hours really to complete it and sort of mull around we might do a bit more though because we might do a little bit of a yeah, along the Ridley. We might do Ridley and then down. And then walk some of the old mining paths back. Different way back, but of course you can just do a linear route there and back. Past a few little sort of old buildings and pens. And if I remember rightly, I think this building up here has been used for target practice. I think the army used it as target practice. So 
see if we can find some evidence of this accusation. Oh my goodness, they have. So you can see in the rendered area there, mottled with little holes. Oh, this side's a lot worse. Just see the mottling of those bullet holes. It's unseasonably warm at the moment and we have been here in November where it's just been ice and you know people slipping all over the place. Yeah, don't be fooled <laughs> by this unseasonable autumn. Aha! So we have come up to the iconic Gladstone Rock. And it's actually a little monument to the opening of this path. Apparently he stood here. That was the Prime Minister at the time by the way. On the September the 13th, 1892, and everybody sang the land of my fathers. Can you imagine that echo in here? That'd be amazing. Rather it? special. Nice little iconic monument there, really. You can see the old uh, works there, can't you, for the trams and stuff. From yeah, the where they've built mines. up the embankment, and you can yeah. see where it's a, a perfectly sort of level, straight line across the hillside. We'll try and take some of that back. We'll come down through that gap and try and go along there. I feel like you're walking in the footsteps of your ancestors a little bit then. I think it really helps me sort of connect with landscape and I know that there's scars they're still part of everything we were and have been and everything we have currently it was just the way things had to be at the time to survive that's the thing isn't it so we've just come off the main path now it's about to turn into a bit more of a steppy and mountainous path if I remember rightly behind us we have more of the old mining buildings these are like old barracks aren't they like they the uh, Anglesey barracks Lameris yeah. But we're just going to use this big old slag heap behind us here. Going to park our bums and grab a cup of tea. Situation report on the teas is they're too hot currently yeah. to drink. So just going to have a cup Don't of sip. Do it again. The pain you'll go oh, through. I know, I just needed a sip. You know, sometimes you just really need a sip. Um, but yeah, we're going to pop these away and then carry on in a second. We'll be taking some more of these views. Beautiful, isn't it? Home to some amazing wildlife as well. Isn't just this area alone has got the mountain goats, yep. otters, stoats. Yeah, and polecats. The Kanedu uh, ponies are a special breed as well, aren't they? Yeah, they're very rare. So, yeah. yeah, There's ravens as well. Uh, for people that don't know, ravens are great big black birds, but they're the largest of the crow family and they are incredible and they make like a boom. Yeah, ravens, ravens are up grow. there, one of my favourite birds. And I they think. are really big as well. You can hear their call before you see them. Yeah. Odin's uh, watchers, aren't they? But yeah, uh, they used to tell him the news. Yeah, bring him the word from the wing. But he always used to use them also to send messages as well. We leave our tea stop behind us. Now picking up a more mountainous sort of slate path, steppy path. It's a very well, well built defined. and established, yeah. Yeah, the only tricky bit on this path is obviously at the end where you have a bit of a scramble. It feels exposed. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll show you it all and you can tell if you want to do it yourself or not. This will be our second time doing the Watkin path, but actually our third time going up the final scramble because we did it as part of a different route. One of the six other routes that Kat mentioned earlier. Your spot for choice, climbing a whiffer. Puffing our way up this uh, amazing valley here. Breathtaking, the, the ripples and the, the shape of the land is just like nothing you'll ever see. Sorry, excuse my knackedness. This is actually considered one of the best examples of a glacial rip and it is beautiful to see this whole it's all carved out down there and you can see all the lumps and bumps and ripples and that's all caused by a movement ice movements are scouring it shifting the geology underneath it it's amazing and literally just cutting into it as well forcing the sediment and the rock down the hill yeah it's incredible isn't it yeah, yeah. one of the finest examples apparently Aha, some of the famous goats. There she is, happy as Larry, and she's got some of her kids up there. And the kids actually stay with her for absolutely ages. They learn all of their knowledge from her, where to get food, where the good water is, and um, where to climb. Everything will be learned from her. They stay together for a long time. It's rather sweet, isn't it? Carrie just said they all look like they're wearing balaclavas. Perhaps they thought that the um, cafe was open at the top, which isn't by the way, the building at the top is not open currently. Check the websites and stuff. If you're coming up and you're expecting the cafe to be open or the train to run all the way up, do check. Because obviously the train also can't always run. It's all, always uh, weather dependent and other things. There's a few other things that may stop the train from running. Don't want to be disappointed. 
still in the shadow of the mountain at the moment as we follow this path up. It just carries on long and straight for a good old chunk now. But up here is an amazing plateau with some Arthurian legend and tales that we'll share with you. Legendary tales of Arthurianisms. And two intrepid travellers that like to sip a cup of tea. Oh, can I have a tea? I think that would be where we have our first cup of tea. That'll be the new legend. The two that travelled with the tea to share it with you overlooking beautiful views down over the miners and pig track. Oh, yeah. So two of the other paths that Kat mentioned earlier. Yeah, they are the busiest. So this one is not a hugely well used track. So your pig and your miners on the other side, which we'll show you in a minute, yep. is the busiest tracks as well as the Flamberis track coming up which follows the train track. Yeah and then you've got Clibglock as well which goes across that's the scramble that's route the scramble that's route the route knife edge for that. the bravest of you out there. That is um, and then obviously the ranger path um, which I think might have been the first path up Snowden. Yeah. Yeah and the Ridley track which is um, we'll take a little bit of that on the way back. Yeah. Welsh people have to tell me how awful my accent is. Right. Sit the he, Kerry. Do a shy tea. Te. Te. I don't know. I've only been learning for a couple of We've weeks. only learnt the essentials, which is can we please have a cup of tea? I want a cup of tea. I, I need a cup of tea. I'm very on the Billy Blue hat kind of Welsh at the moment because it's just literally just being able to say the really fundamental primary school things at the moment. I've got a lot to learn. But we'll keep you updated. Yeah, I'm on the sort of baby. Over the months ahead. Baby talk currently. We're starting to come out of the shadows now. So we're still working our way up towards that legendary ledge we told you about earlier. Long, slow climb. It's quite a nice, uh, you do get lots of opportunity, lots of time to warm your legs up. It's not like one of those mountain routes where you're out of the car and straight into a climb. Your legs do have a good opportunity to warm up. Starting a bit of a zigzag section now, which would generally indicate a steeper, sharper climb. As the sun starts to come up now as well. This is spectacular. I know we say it all the time, but it's part and parcel of why we do it. We enjoy it. We love it so much. We've not seen a single soul all morning. One lady down the bottom, and that's been it so far. Beautiful. Beautiful, exhausting solitude, isn't it? Absolutely it is. The, the summit keeps coming in and out of the clouds. Yeah, I'm loving that. that. Do you see the darkness over there? Though? Yeah. That doesn't come over. No, I know. The clouds actually going that way. So. That way, yeah. yeah. And we can actually, now we've come up high enough, we can actually see back out over the Irish Sea, down towards Cricketh and Barmouth. Ah, Port Merion. And Port Merion, our beautiful, beloved Port Merion. I see it. That was a hard push up there, I won't lie. My legs felt that. It is steep in places, isn't it? Very, But yeah. the path, as you've seen, is quite stable and quite good. Yeah, considering mountain path, how much footfall it takes in the course of a year, amazing conditions. So well done all the volunteers, all the workers, give their time and effort to looking after Absolutely. these paths so that the likes of us can come out and enjoy them. Definite change of terrain now as we come away from the path a little bit into a more looser, scree area, more boulder fieldy. You can just see the path at the side. And I understand a lot of people won't do this path because of it. Obviously, we'll show you exactly what it looks like. You can make your decision on how you feel and we'll tell you at the end, sort of how long it took from the bottom of Granbury Scree to the top. So we'll tell you how long that took. Avid watchers and subscribers to the channel will know that I don't do well no, on exposed scrambly yeah. areas. So already in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah. But we'll be honest with you. We'll show it as it is. Kerry does have tinnitus and vertigo and he has a, a fear of heights as well. So. Yeah. so we come to a juncture here, marked with this big cairn. And that's just onto our right now is Llewellyn. And there's a scramble and another way down onto the Miner's path and another way around, one of the other routes we were talking about earlier. But we'll be heading off in search of Tea Ridge. And a definite place we're going to park our bums and have a cup of tea. Cat tell you all about the Arthurian legend tied to these slins and this area. How was that, Bab? Yeah, knackering, but absolutely stunning. Yeah. Every step more beautiful than the next. Look at this. Oh, Kerry. Huh? Ideal. So before we stop and have our tea, we're going to show you some of the paths we've been talking about all morning. Mm. Look at this. So the big clin here below us, the path that wraps around the clin, past all the old miners' buildings, that is the miners' path. It is. And just a bit higher up the mountain there, there's another path you can kind of see, it looks a bit like Cut a stone wall. Yeah. That's the pig track. And then across the horizon, against the blue of the sky there, you've got Clibglock 
uh, the knife edge route, the dangerous one. There's also obviously a route up this mountain here and it comes around this side of the Flynn and up here and eventually you come down here and you actually always meet the Watkin path to either go up or down or you go back where you came. So that's yeah. Great. According to legend, Kerry, you were like this. This is where Arthur, King Arthur, slayed a mighty giant. Wow, well, okay. And this is now his burial spot. Well, the giants? Yes, the whole, like the mountains, it's burial Oh, spot. wow. And also, this Flynn below us is meant to house the Lady of the Lake with Excalibur, King Arthur's sword. A lot of Arthurian legend in Wales. Obviously, it might be the birthplace of Merlin. Yes. Um, yeah, our Dinas Imeris video. That's right. Video. All in legend, obviously, but it's Lovely. a good legend. It's a good legend. It does look like it's been created via magic yeah. rather than, you know, normal yeah. geological forces. So as we leave our legendary ledge behind, added to the legend, two tea and Valhallian cups of tea have been consumed there. I'll be now pick up the Watkin path again, heading towards the base of Oweth, where the, the base of the scramble climb now. We're just following this wonderful little almost ridgeline path, isn't it? Yeah, really nice, isn't it? It's always nice after a tea stop as well, isn't it? You gradually feel your rucksack starting to get a little bit lighter. Do you work your way through your picnic and provisions? Especially appreciate when you come into a section like this. So where the wind has now picked up and the temperature dropped a little bit, we have now popped our hard shells on over our fleeces, just to ensure. I actually did the opposite, Kerry. Did you? Put a fleece under my hard shell. You did that. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I got my hat on. Yeah, hats on, gloves on. It has gone chill. Yeah, definitely chill. Clouds come in. Keep smashing that like button to help that cloud pass by. Definitely scientifically proven to help clear cloud cover. Even better view here now of where the pig and the miners track come together and you start to meet the infamous zigzags that you lead you up to the Lamberis and summit path. But we're heading back this way. So let the record book show we are passing the marker stone for the Watkin path at a quarter to 11 and then we'll give you a little uh, update once we reach the, the path stone at the top there. Okay guys and girls intrepid explorers. So this is the bottom of that sort of scree scramble. It starts off not too bad but I know there's a couple of places where the track almost looks lost. Good luck Harry. Yeah I'll tell you what I like about this is although exposed on the left here yeah. you do feel that you can lean into the right. The right yeah. So you do feel that you can you can gather your thoughts, control your jelly legs and have yeah. a word. That's one of them raven types. <laughs> that was good timing. Both of us had our cameras going there as Odin sent his uh, watcher to have a little look and a check on us. Although I said about veering to the right, you do need to keep the path very much in your sight because it's easy to get misled. Again, another area where they've done a lot of work on this path. Lots of bags of stones have been dropped here and worked on over the years. So you see what it's made of. It is that stuff that sort of does come away from you a little bit, but also gives you a little bit of uh, steadiness. It's not awful. Hiya. You just sort of get up. <laughs> Do what's right for you, isn't it? I say so. But just, um, yeah, just never go too far left. That's probably some of the worst bit there. Due to how slippery it can be, there is water that runs down that way. But it's not, I mean, Kerry can be very unsteady. Yeah, that's it, and then up there. But he seems okay, you okay with it? Yeah, you've just got to use your hands. Yeah, I know. So you need gloves, put gloves on. I would. I like to feel, so I always go gloveless. Yeah. But yeah, I do find it hard. Out of 10? Oh, that's not too bad, about six. Six, six, so six, far. six, not bad. Yeah. So far, so good. A bit loose underfoot in places, but that helps. You can just grab a hold of the sturdier lumps of rock. I'm struggling to get my head up and take in the views. I, I do want to stop and just turn you around and have a little look at the views in a minute if we can. I know we said we'd give you a timing of the path and we are not going to race it so it is going to be a genuine honest account of our time up here. It's about the fourth time in my lifetime that I've grabbed onto this rock. I feel that we're becoming quite uh, close friends. Thanks mate, thanks for the support and thanks for always being there for me. Oh, okay, just getting some air back in my lungs. Standing up a little bit. I do find that I crouch over quite a lot which then can help almost make it feel worse. 
because you're not getting the air in. You can probably hear it in my breath, my breathing. I'm trying my best. And it's definitely getting better over the years. I always think it's with belief as well. Definitely. You do it a few times, you start to believe it. The be confidence, okay. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we've reached the steps now. To take us the rest of the way to the top of the Watkin Path. But yeah, that took 20 to 25 minutes. Yep. From the bottom of the scramble, that sort of flat a bit as you start coming up, to this point here. But taking it easy for little breathers, so no rush. I mean, if you rush up, you could probably do it in 10, but so 20, 25 minutes. Not give, bad. Give or take. It's not too awful. Pathfinding is probably quite difficult if you haven't got nice visibility. You literally just follow these steps up now to the top of the. Yeah, there'll be another marker still, won't there? They will. Pay your toll. Right, so, so from the marker stone, the walking path at the bottom to this stone here, coming up that scramble was 35 minutes with a good few breathers. We've now got to take you along the jagged mountain top to the summit stone. A lot of people might think that once you get to the top of these paths, that's it. You were... No, 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 no. She still... couldn't ever allow that. No, there's still a bit more to go yet. Working our way up this little rocky section now towards the railway station and cafe. I think, yeah, I just caught a glimpse of the silhouette up on the horizon. An incredible thought to think this was all once underwater. I'd say there's some really good fossils actually on the top. Gotta Always. get there first. Yeah, we've got to get there first, haven't we? Come on then, Kerry. Tell us Snowden, here you are nearer to heaven. I'll say you are in heaven here, surely. Pretty heavenly this morning. Oh, yeah. Is there anything you want to few people up on the summit but certainly not as busy as this wonderful mountain can get let's have a look thank you <laughs> see this Currently have the highest dog in Wales. Kerry, I want a mega treat if I get up on this. <laughs> treat. <laughs> so there we go, everybody. The summit of Ewithba at 1,085 meters is in sheer butte. Up in the clouds, sun just bursting out behind us. Yeah, it's gonna burn it off, it's gonna burn it off. She's a beauty and very popular, so we shan't hang. Catch a couple of photos. And then find somewhere to go and have a cup of tea. Glorious view. It's all steamed up anyway. No worries, I'll take loads and then you can uh, you. take your pick then, can't you? So we're just dropping off now to find somewhere to have a cup of tea. Tuck ourselves away from the crowds. Summer out of the wind as well. Wasn't that good? Lovely. Yeah, always good up there. Always good. Lovely atmosphere. Yeah, everyone. I everyone's... know why people are so attracted to it. And I understand that there's a fear that too many people go. But it's a very attractive mountain. And I think in some ways that's incredible i don't know any other place in britain that so many people are, uh, would take that much time to get to obviously people can come up the trains but lots of people just walk the entire mountain just to be at the top there glorious i think this looks like the sort of place you might find a moomin drinking a cup of tea. No, so, I was just saying to myself, that sun was genuinely warm just then. I baked. Yeah. Like that lovely bit of bacon. I think it's like mid-November. I'm a thousand meters up. I've <laughs> got warm sun. Mad, isn't it? So we have found the ultimate tea spot. We won't lie, we've had, we've had tea in this spot before. I call it the tea nook. And I'm going to say that for crap. Own it now, maybe. Could be ours until somebody else dare contest us for it. Dare. No. Don't you dare. I'm gonna stop and have a cup of tea, consume some food, shock horror, carrying eating food scandal, and then we're gonna take you off in a different direction. 
Yeah, we've decided we will take the uh, rid the uh, ridge line. Yep. And then we'll cut down. A looped background then. It's a wonderful path as well. Great, Absolutely yeah. Absolutely gorgeous, yeah. I still do like the Watkin as well, mind. I don't know who'd yeah, win both, in a fight. Both got things about them that I think are amazing. Yeah. I think it all depends on your mood, what you fancy, what you what you're craving. I especially love being close to the water, seeing the streams, hearing the waterfalls. Yeah, you do. So don't. that for me is uh, an extra um, tick in the box. Yakita from the summit of Erwithba, 1,085 meters. It's crazy. Brilliant. So now we're going to set off along the Ridby path. Quite exposed actually, this next little bit. It's a ridge walk, really. Well known for being absolutely gorgeous. So, oh, look, I love this sort of jaggedy wildness. Really adds to a walk for me. Makes you feel a lot more sort of intrepid and dangerous than maniac y. This is how the path sort of starts along here. It's pretty obvious, but of course you've got to be careful because it will have a very sharp drop down to both your left and your right. You actually see our path snaking up there. Hello. Hello you. Views, Kerry, views. And as quickly as that, it can all change. Beautiful. I'm covering the path ahead of us now to take you on. How's it going up there, Foster? Yeah, things are going well. I'm heading down. Glad to hear that. Very excited now that the clouds have lifted and revealed the path ahead. How inviting is this? Look at this now. It's really opened up lovely, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Just changed in a heartbeat, hasn't it? Yeah. Beautiful everywhere. As with all our walks and uh, past videos, there'll be a lot of details down in the description for you. So there'll be a little bit of factoids and parking information and distance and duration, that kind of stuff. Cat will populate all that for us. Well done, Mrs. Moomin, thank you very much. Don't forget to tickle that like button. This is a glorious piece of route. I'd say my favorite bridge walk. I just feel safe enough to be confident to actually stop and look around and soak it all up and enjoy. I'm vertical, so I'm breathing properly, not sweating or panicking. You look a bit panicky, Kerry. I am a bit panicky. My, my, my legs are screaming, shut up. Weird steps are a bit odd. Yeah, lots of jutted out bits of rock you need to be careful of, be a bit wary of. Things get a little bit more sort of jaggedy down this bit. Be a bit more careful with yourself. Ooh. She says as she lumps herself down. Like an old sack of potatoes. All right. Let's see how many Kerry gets on. This is what I mean about having those little bits you can just lean into. Yeah, of course. Give yeah. You confidence. Friendly little rocks. So another two paths we mentioned earlier, Khiddi path, taking off down that way. And then the ranger path, which is just encased in the cloud, coming down this side, a lot gentler. Cat makes it look like a stroll in the park. I'm clinging to the sides for dear life. Hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Go on, Kerry, you're so cute. Are you stuck there now? Yeah, if you could keep moving, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, she makes it look so easy. And I've just got my uh, Snoop Doggy Dog lean on at the moment. Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, not big fan of this bit. I my blinkers are on firmly currently looking at all of this. This is my safety net. This is where I'm safe and happy. This is ground. Keep moving guys, keep moving. Keep being distracted. Tell me something in the comments that you uh, like to think of when you get scared. Where is your happy place? Mine's currently a cup of tea in Port Mirian Government House. Look at that drop though, if you fell down there. Oh, Ooh. hello. I've looked. I peeked. The steam coming off me at the moment is actually pure fear. <laughs> Path widens off here towards the end of that little um, enclosed section of ridge walking. I feel a lot safer to tell you this is why I like this area. Again, this path, this route that we've taken today, just all the different views you get, you just get so many different vistas, all for the price of one. 
once you come off the path that sort of skirts around, you'll see to the right hand side as you're descending, there's the path, there is the path that will go into the, obviously the village. But actually you want to start heading down towards the left. You'll then match up with the path, the old path. So we've adjoined the main path down now. You just sort of head on down towards all the old slag heaps and mining works there and Flynn. It's a very good path, very spacious, very That's wide. It. Yeah, we don't technically join the walking path. We will be parallel to it. Yep. Walk round and then we'll rejoin it. Definitely easier with the go go gadget leg approach, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not the easiest of descent but it's, it's not too bad this is not the worst by any stretch of the imagination I mean, what would you say is the worst then one of my least favorite would have to be coming off of the great gable oh yeah god that's awful. that was pretty uh down the screen you mean pretty terrible yeah, yeah yeah i agree what about you guys tell us if you've ever had any really awful descent yes what is your worst your least favorite descent it sticks in your mind thinking i'm never doing that yeah, again you think why was i here in the first place we've got a bit of a scrambly oh, drop blimey. here actually so we're now going to work our way down this little piece here We'll scramble our way down here and rejoin the path at the bottom there. I do recall this. Do you? Yeah. I had forgotten it until this very moment, <laughs> but now See, I do recall it. This is what we mean. This is exactly what we mean. And now we're picking up this lovely little section of path, which will hopefully lead us on towards our uh, fence line and style. Brilliant. How are you doing back there, Mrs. Moomin? Yeah, really good. Yeah, really good. We've come over the stile, walking along now. Some little scrambly bits which she showed you earlier. Mostly um, a good, clear, open, wide path to follow and beautiful views all round. Slip slidey in places. It's a proper mountain path. This isn't an overly worked path. Clearly see the stone wall down in the valley ahead of us now as we're heading towards the Clin. The next little turn off will be at that wall. The path leads you down and around the wall as we take you back down towards the mining work. So we've just got to head down now from the wall. It's a bit scree, but we're heading back to walk parallel with the walking path before we join back up with it later on. Following this own path down and we'll pick up the tramway soon. People down there doing a bit of work, look, which is nice to see. One last glimpse up in the cloud. Giacomo, a whiffer, thank you for today. So we've now picked up one of the old tram lines. It's cut through this wonderful mountain. I love that grass. So, where the... so along where the sleep were going horizontally across the track. The grass remembers. I know. So we're not far off rejoining the path now where we were earlier. Yeah, not far. See some of the waterfalls. You can hear the river running in the background. There's various bits where there's a little like been chiseled out through the faces of the mountain. Oh, hello. And we take a left here and pick up an old cart track now dropping back down to the walking path. What are they for then, Lovey? Well, they would have had the tracks. Oh, of course. Cool. It's just nice that you can still see the, the old work there. You can see them all the way down. Look. Oh, it's amazing. We're about to rejoin the walking path now. It's a great route, isn't it? Lovely. Yeah, I'd really it, like to. Easy to see why it's held in such high regard. Yeah. Beautiful. Follow this path down now, doing all the sights and sounds around us. Yeah we head back into that beautiful woodland where we started our adventure today. I look forward to it actually. So 
we've had an amazing day climbing Awithfa from yeah. the Watkin Pass. Absolutely fantastic. It's been a proper day, a proper adventure. Really enjoyed it from start to finish. It's been about nine miles. By the time we get back down yeah. to the car, it's been about nine miles. We started off about eight o'clock and it's now around half three. You don't have to take that long. You could just go up yeah. and down linear, but we decided to sort of go round and... Make your own adventure, yes, isn't it? of course. Thank you very much if you're still with us at this point. Really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to tickle that like button. Think. Any questions, drop us a little comment down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. <gasps> subscribe, you. We know that some of you we haven't. See you. And we think it might be you. you. Click the bell notification ding, 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 so that you know when we upload new videos. And until our next adventure, stay safe and well. And keep enjoying those green spaces. Take care. Bye, Bye. everyone.